Welcome to Shark Cut Up CNC. Today we're going to discuss the Easy Drawer Maker gadget, which is used in VCAR Pro and Aspire Vectric uh, software. First, we're going to go ahead and close the gadget down and start fresh. Create a new file. We start with set job type, single sided, job size 24 by 24, which is a good starting point for the gadget with 750,000 thick material. Material surface for the Z position, XY datum is going to be in the lower left corner. That is the best place to be used for the gadget. You can change this, you can change your sheet size anytime afterwards. Let's go ahead and uh, build our project. Now we're going to go and get the gadget. Here we have a gadget interface. This is the main interface. It tells you at the top what units you're working to in the job setup. You are wor you're working in the imperial standard of inches. Now, the drawer gadget is set for the calculations of the cabinet opening for the drawer. It's not the drawer actual size. That is calculated within the gadget itself. You want to use the opening size of the cabinet where the drawer is going to fit into. We're going to go ahead and set the material thickness to what our job setup is. We're going to leave our drawer opening size and the count at the, as the defaults. The drawer bottom, we're going to leave that as a default. All this we'll leave as a default for now. We're going to go ahead and change this to a roll top desk. Now we're going to go to an important phase of the gadget. That's the project setup. You want to be sure to set a project path for all the files that the gadget creates for the gadget. That's cut list. There's an export list of all your defaults. And the cut list is in various extensions like an Excel spreadsheet, CSV file, HTML file, and so on. This path saves all those files. We say OK to that because we don't need to change any of the other information for right now. But that other information you can in, add in as you go. Now we're going to go and add the tools. First we got a bloom circle in the back. That's for the slide. We'll use a centurion. Now we got a clearing. Clearing is usually a big bit. So you want to get a quarter inch bit for that. The finger bit is the profile that cleans it up. So we'll use that one again for cleaning it up. Now we got another clearing. That's for the dados. The dado uh, profile pocket. It cleans it up and we'll do the uh, cut cutouts that's usually a big bit too or you can use a small one it depends on what your material thickness is and all okay now we'll go to the milling defaults and this is where you pick up the drawer style the joint style bottom style and all the other <clears throat> default set settings. We got a finger bit diameter which is an eighth of an inch. The profile bit diameter is a quarter inch. Our part placement on the sheet, the gap in between each part. Then you got your data width clearance. That's the clearance that the bottom fits into on the dados. You got your back, your sides, your front, 
you want a clearance, a little bit of a clearance in there where you're using 50 thousandths. Finger clearance, I like 10 thousandths. The dado height, let's not get confused with that because the dado height is not the actual dado cut or depth. It is the actual material you are leaving. In other words, if you got uh, 750 thousandths, which we're working with, the dado that's cut out is a half inch, leaving 250 thousandths material. That's what you put in here, the material left behind, not the material that's cut out. Here we use, uh, this is for information for the drawer slides. The drawers, uh, we're using a bloom soft close. You can say yes or no to it. In this case, we're going to leave it at the defaults for the captive bottom dado. So we're going to say yes to that. We say yes to the boom hole. That's a hole in the back of the drawer, on the drawer back, for the slide to fit into at the back of the drawer. Here we have our different joint styles. And with each joint style, you'll have information over here on the right. Like for the blind T-bone, you need a little thickness for that material that covers the fingers. That's your blind. So we're not going to be using that. We're going to be using the dog bone. But each one of these settings, the changes on the right, are whether they're needed or not, they come up or disappear. For the flat bottom, you don't need any of these measurements. So we'll go back to the captive bottom. I like my captive bottom to be at 250 thousandths. Too many decimals. From the bottom of the drawer. It gives me a little more room in my drawer. Alright, we got all our stuff set up. Our information, dimensions. You also have layers for the tool paths. You can change these to whatever you're comfortable with. And the color of each of the vectors for those layers. I usually leave it set as, as is because it, it, it does work. And if you get yourself familiarized with them, they'll work for you too. Alright, we're all set. We say OK to that. You notice it creates all the vectors on the different sheets of different thicknesses. And here is all your tool paths. We'll turn, we'll go ahead and <clears throat> right now we got an alert. This alert lets you know that something has to be done in order to make everything kosher or correct. It says all sheets are replicated from the initial sheet which is our initial setup of 24 by 24 by 750 thick. Now that thickness can vary from sheet to sheet. And that's what this is telling you. Therefore, you will need to manually adjust the material thickness to match the part thicknesses. So we OK that. We'll back off. You see the one sheet says 750. The other says 250. So what we do is we go to our sheet tab and you notice this is the job setup measurements. This is what our actual is. So what we need to do is go, let's see, the bottom part. Yep. Sheet one. Click on that. We say edit. We change our thickness to 250 thousandths. Now it matches our sheets. It's 2575. What I also like to do here, and you don't have to, it's up to you, but I like to make the sheets match my parts. So what I'll do is I'll double click on this and I'll change this one to bottom. Hit enter. Double click on this one. And 
we say other parts. Now you notice down here it says other parts and bottom. And over here to the far right, if I click on this, you'll see that the one sheet is bottom with its tool path and the other is other parts. Now, before we end this <coughs> little session, there's one other feature I'd like to point out to y'all. And that is the gadget reset. We're going to go ahead and close this and start fresh with the same material. <coughs> and we're going to bring back the gadget. And here it's all set with the Imperial Standard. Let's say we went through this thing and we got confused as to what we we're putting in here. You could change it or you can actually restart everything by going to the Gadget Reset, which is on the About page. And it's in the upper right hand corner. You click on it, it comes up with a requester and the requesters our pop-up window says reset variables back to factory settings with the current drawing units and you say yes to that and you say okay now in previous versions of the drawer gadget you used to have to shut the gadget completely down in order for it to reset you notice everything's reset you no longer have to shut the gadget completely down now, if you're uncomfortable with the idea of not shutting it down, go ahead, shut it down, bring it back up. It's not going to hurt anything. But you really don't have to because you notice all the information's changed. It's no longer 7.5. It's no longer with these measurement, I mean, uh, tools. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. We're going to show you that it can be reset in the metric standard also. We'll change our job setup to metric 609.6, 609.6, That's all basically the same as what I was using in the Imperial Standard. It's just in metric. Now we are in a metric setup. We go grab our gadget again. Now you see it says the job setup is in millimeters, but if you notice the gadget is still in the Imperial English Standard. If you look over here, you got 375, you got 250, it's all in the Imperial English Standard. So what we'll do is we'll reset the gadget. Okay there, the numbers are bigger, that, that's because it's millimeters. So there you go. You can use the gadget to make drawers uh, by having individual parts. Without the tools listed, it'll give you the parts. If you add the uh, tools to your gadget, it creates the tool paths and the vectors for the parts. And it lays out all the tool paths. Now, you, if I say OK to this, it's going to tell me that it cannot find a project that uh, set up data, rerun the program, and set up the project. That, what, what that means is we don't have a path set. So it will automatically tell you right away, hey, it's not going to work unless you give me a path to put those files into. Now it'll work even without the tools. It'll just create the parts for you. It won't create the tool paths. And as you can see, it laid it out on several different sheets, several different thicknesses. You will need to go in and fix all that here on the sheet side or sheet tab. Well, there you have it, fellas. Gang, enjoy. And thank you for watching Shark Cut Up CNC. Have a good day.